Okay, we're going to talk about the biologic, sometimes called atmospheric carbon cycle, and the geologic carbon cycle. And as you'll see, the carbon cycle is kind of a cycle within a cycle. So we have our carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. There's carbon in other molecules as well, but we're going to focus on carbon dioxide as it relates most directly to um, living things. And that carbon dioxide gets absorbed by the producers, plants, or some bacteria. And the producers then put that carbon into molecules like glucose and other macromolecules, other complex sugars. That carbon then is transferred to the consumers. So animals, fungus, some other bacteria and they consume it, they get the energy from the the sugars and they release the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. And so we have the biologic cycle or atmospheric because it's taking place above the ground for the most part. And this is an equilibrium. There's a constant amount of carbon that's being recycled through this. But it's not the only only place the carbon can be. The carbon can also go into the ocean. So the ocean can serve as a what's called a carbon sink because it can store great amounts of it. The and we'll come back to this in a minute. The the carbon also can end up mostly from plants but some from some consumers too. Um, through fossilization as oil or coal um, or things like sandstone um, and that that is a carbon sink also and then that through geologic activity like volcanoes or erosion even can get released back into the atmosphere as well. And so this is then the geologic carbon cycle. So we participate in this as consumers and have for um, 100,000 years or so as since we've been Homo sapiens and even longer with our other ancestors. But now in the last 150 years or so we are also participating in this because we've added a new link here and we've added fossil fuel burning and so as we burn the fossil fuels this carbon that was put in this carbon sink over hundreds of millions of years through fossilization at a very slow rate has been released and depending on who you ask we've already maybe reached the point where more has been released than is actually in the ground so in a hundred years we've added the CO2 back into the atmosphere. And what does that do? Well, that adds more CO2, so can the plants take up more of it and pass it on to the animals? Um, but one thing that has happened is a lot of it has stayed here, so now we just have more CO2 in the atmosphere. And the other thing that has happened as is that it is diffusing into the ocean, and the carbon sink of the ocean is getting more carbon dioxide in it and so it's storing more and more than what the life in the ocean evolved to live with and so right now the ocean pH level is rising and many of the things like coral reefs did not evolve to live with that high of a pH and so their their populations are are declining and so the humans have we've participated in the atmospheric carbon cycle for a very long time. Now in the last 150 years or so we have been participating in the in the geologic carbon cycle as well by speeding up the process of reducing this carbon sink and at moving that carbon from the carbon sink here into the atmosphere and into the oceans.